Hello and welcome to another sketch to digital video, where I take a page from my sketchbook and turn it into a digital illustration. This time I'll be using this little witch sketch and work on it in Affinity Designer. She was looking like a generic witch, so I wanted to push the concept further. I actually forgot to paint the rest of her apron. Knowing I'll be drawing it back in, she has to be using that apron for some kitchen magic. That would mean her hair will need the proper style for food management, and this book could be her recipe book. Baking would be a fun theme to incorporate. I sketched three redesigns for her hair and outfit where that theme would shine through. With cream hat, cupcake inspired dresses, she's already drastically different. This idea would look nice with a children's book style, where a narrative could take place across a whole spread. I applied bits from each of her redesign on this sketch in Krita. Her personality changed from pouty to overconfident about her skills despite the chaos behind her. The composition is thematically split into two scenes, where on one side she's concentrating on decorating her baked goods, while behind her, the actual baking process is a dangerous mess. Her crow familiar is the only witness though. Here's the whole sketch. I switch from a blob frame in favor of a frame that flows across the canvas. Switching over to Affinity Designer. Before I color the sketch itself, I drew her head on its own to use for style explorations. This is going to be a slice of what the finished render will look like. It'll help me avoid fumbling around because there's a lot going on in the actual composition. I use the swatches panel as a control panel for all the colors in the artwork. As I color the shapes in, I assign them as global colors already for later. As long as I set the global color, any adjustment made to this color will be reflected on the assets using it. I made a layer that would hold lighting effects over the whole character. As far as I know, I can't clip layers to a group of layers. The next best thing was to duplicate the main shapes of the head and combine them by pressing the Add Geometry button. This forms one shape that will act as the mask. At first, I used it to contain an image texture, but realized it wasn't going to do anything against brush textures. So I hid the whole shape for now. Just remember that it's there. The shading uses raster brushes, but I still wanted to control the color through the swatches panel. I made a rectangle that's clipped under the main shape, then assigned a global color to it. I hit Alt-click on the mask button to create a mask that's already black. In the pixel persona, this mask is where I shade with raster brushes. Like other mask layers in most art programs, I painted with black and white to reveal the colors from the rectangle shape. These texture brushes are from the Frankentoon Texturizer set. Not sponsored. I got these as a limited time freebie from Affinity's website. They're meant to be layered to achieve unique textures. For line details, I went back to the designer persona for vector brushes, like the Sumie brushes. That way, I can fine-tune the thickness and pressure, making her hat look like silky whipped cream. The methods I used on this hat layer pretty much defined the whole process I used on this style sample. It's defined by a smooth outline with raster textures and vector brush details. The style is similar to my mushroom moments video. So check that out because that's where I explain tools like the vector brush or the transparency tool. Remember the shape I made for an image texture? I used it for a radial gradient lighting instead. Then I made a hue sat layer set to zero saturation so I can test the values and contrast. The focal point is the face, thus it should have the lightest values. The hair and hat have darker values to frame that smile. I shaded her eyes like simple anime eyes. Just needs two tones, huge pupils, and white ellipses for shininess. Now she really looks excited to wreck the kitchen with her magic. This looks great already, but I want to push it further. I duplicated the layer to work on another style. Lab Squad Media gave this helpful comment in my Mushroom Moments video. 
They suggested using the Erase Blending mode on a stroke for a ragged but editable outline. I used the default dry pastel brush to draw a stroke over the face outline. Color won't matter here, but I used black anyway. I clip these lines into the face shape, then set the blend mode to erase, and it does look good! Thanks, Lab Squad! I wanted to automate the brush settings a bit, so I went to the Styles panel, clicked on the Menu button, and Add Styles category. This is where I can save properties like the Stroke settings, Color settings, Effects, and Blend mode to access for future projects. With the Erase Strokes selected, I clicked on the Menu button again and Add Styles from Selection. The style is saved here, and I can click on it to convert any stroke into a dry pastel erase brush. Here's a sample stroke with a red color. While that's selected, choose the style from the Styles panel. With the Erase Blend mode, it's erasing over all the layers underneath it. I found that a quicker way to implement this is to duplicate the main shape, clip it to the original, and set the erase style. Should you try this process for yourself? Do this outline effect before you add any other sublayers. Whenever I duplicated my shapes, I had to delete their sublayers to keep them simple. I topped the second style off with an inky stroke on the hat. The erase effect is too subtle from afar, so I adjusted the stroke width to make the jaggedness more obvious. This effect shrinks the shape though. To adjust this quickly, I used the contour tool to expand the erase shape, thus reducing the shrinkage. I also use the contour tool to shrink the gradient layer. It gives this rim light effect because the gradient isn't reaching the edges. If I turn the desaturation layer on, the gradient is at its darkest on the tip of her hat. Without this, the tonal value of the hat looks equal to the face when, again, the face should be the lightest part. I started a third style. No new techniques here, just added outlines and replaced strokes with the dry pastel brush. But I also retextured the head with cross hatches from the Frankentoon set. This comes close to the original colored pencil textures, more than what the splotchy textures could achieve at least. Finally, on the fourth style, I combined the outlines of style 2 with the textures of style 3 for a style that I'm ultimately happy with. So that was basically the process I followed for the rest of the illustration. Once the layers build up, these techniques might be overkill. You can certainly shade illustrations with pixel layers instead of painting on a mask. It would be faster. I'm just using the most non-destructive ways to achieve certain effects because Affinity Designer has those options. Pick and choose whichever method would best fit your pipelines. For her star wand, Designer conveniently has a star tool. I fiddled with the inner radius and turned curve edges on to make this look chunkier. I then converted it to curves. This removes the smart shape options but lets me move the nodes around to give it controlled imperfections. The sprinkles are just lines with round caps. I varied their widths to give the illusion of depth. Varying their spacing also prevents that flatness. Some would clump together and some would float away from the group. Sprinkles alone look monotonous, so I used the star and heart tools to add new shapes among them. To make the cracked eggs, I started with the whole egg first from a modified ellipse. Then I drew the cracked shape. I duplicated this and modified the crack to vary the eggs. With an egg and its crack selected, I hit the divide button among the geometry buttons. I delete the excess shape, so I'm left with two halves of a cracked egg. Wiry things like the whisk can make do as just textured strokes. At first, the second tray was supposed to carry either cookies or cupcake batter, but cinnamon rolls made for better silhouettes, and they don't ask for a lot of details. I can just duplicate an initial shape and nudge the size and nodes around. The magic effects on the wand needed more personalization. It's just a blob. Some star spokes might do the trick. Here's the line art done with all the layers in the right order. The coloring process is simply turning the strokes off on major shapes and choosing the appropriate fill color. My swatch library expanded along the way as I introduced more colors. I kept her dress consistently purple like the traditional sketch. 
but I omitted the red ribbon because her hair was already red-ish. The two colors of the cupcake frostings are pink and blue, which are analogous to purple. It harmonizes well with her dress. Character-wise, purple is not this witch's favorite color, she just can't choose between pink and blue. Her cupcakes have this burnt brown color because she didn't pay attention to the oven, so they came out burnt. She was a bit too excited to decorate them. The side with the baking supplies will possess warmer colors as is appropriate for a warm kitchen mood. I used the purple to orange gradient for the background to match the cool to warm color transition. And before I shade anything, I applied the pastel edges. I have easy access to the settings for the effect because of that step where I saved it in my style library. During this step, I can also quickly apply the pastel edges by duplicating the shapes, pasting the style with Ctrl Shift V, then tucking them into their main shapes. Copy pasting the style would also include the offset settings made with the offset tool. I found a major limitation with the pastel edges. More width drowns out sharp corners like on the eggshells, losing details in the process. I had to either ease up on the width or move some nodes around. When I'm happy with the pastel edge effects, it's time to shade. Again, I tucked a rectangular vector of the shadow color and gave it an all-black mask. I'm basically masking the shadow color back in with a white brush. Reintroducing the outline for the hat rim here. Her recipe book has long been stained with cupcake frosting. She's actually been ignoring the recipe. The food presented a good opportunity to play with textures again. I just combined other brushes with the cross hatching. For the frosting, I used some cloudy splotch texture under the hatching to give it a creamy surface. The cupcakes themselves have some speckles for a spongy surface. I drew some lines on the piping bags to indicate they're being squeezed. On the other side, the light from the oven fire is reflecting on some of the ingredients and utensils. To shade strokes, I used the gradient tool and a bit of noise setting for texture. I did the same gradient method to shade the whisk. Some yellow on this egg and some yellow on the cinnamon bun with some speckles for that spongy surface again. This scratchy brush makes the fire look wilder, like it's not obeying the rules I set for the textures. I paired it with this swirly doodle brush for the obligatory pencil effect. Here's the character and props, shaded. All that's left is the background. I color picked from the gradient and used the crosshatch and other Frankentune brushes to layer in a smoky effect. I also painted some particle effects whenever I saw the chance to. Soft amber-like particles behind the fire, powdery stuff for the salt and dough, embers for the magic cloud as well, maybe even powdery sugar around the cupcakes. How about some icing on her cookie wand? Now it reminds me of a Krispy Kreme donut. The last step from the style sample earlier was the lighting. I took the shapes that make up her silhouette and combined them into one shape. I offset it inwards to form a fake rim light, 
Then I masked the shading layer to black and painted it back in with a white brush. Since there are two light sources, her wand and the oven fire, I also made a highlight layer that reflect those colors. It's another gradient that goes from light blue to yellow, set to overlay mode. As a finishing touch, I also add particle effects on the borders. I did some more color adjustments, so now I can do the before and after montage. She started out as a little Hermione ripoff with an unfinished apron. Now she's a sweet baker from Hell's Kitchen with a whole composition that tells a story. Hope you enjoyed this video. Comment, like, and subscribe if you learned something new or if you'd like to see more art videos both traditional and digital. Thanks for watching and bye!